our God is not God of the dead, but of the living. Dear friends, in today's liturgy, we get inspiration from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 12, verse 18 to 27. And we see Jesus confronted with another group of the Sadducees who did not believe in the resurrection, the life after this world, after this life. These Sadducees are people who believed in the Pentateuch, like any other Jew, and in the Pentateuch there is no mention about the resurrection. So remember that the Pharisees, scribes, now the Sadducees are creating stories and they are influencing people negatively to plot against a person who is doing very good, that is Jesus. Sometimes we are like that fire of negativity, moving around, influencing others negatively. Let our influence be a positive influence, a, an influence that does good to us, to others, but especially an influence that will enable us to attain heaven, to be in union and in peace with God, with others, and with ourselves. Instead, we see these Sadducees coming always and influencing others negatively to have a negative attitude towards Jesus. My brother, my sister, never influence anybody negatively so that only negative air moves around. Even if somebody has done something wrong, there's no wrong going around publishing um, the negativity of others and also putting down others and even creating more fire, putting more exaggerations even on what others have not even done. Okay, they did something small, but sometimes you realize there are people who will even make that small thing become big. Now this is what the Sadducees did. And they came to Jesus creating a story and says that there were seven brothers. And first of all, the first brother was married to a wife, and that wife, and, and that brother died. That brother died without having children. And in the, in the Mosaic law, in the, in the law of Moses, uh, when, uh, when a brother dies and he takes over the woman of that brother who has died, who is, you can call a widow, in this case, he takes over that woman who was who was left alone, and so it happens to the second brother, the second brother who died, and the, the the second brother who died, and the third brother took over the wife. Like that, seven of them had that one one wife of the first brother, and all the seven died without any children and leaving the wife alone. And the Sadducees now are asking. Jesus, now that the seven brothers have all died without children, and now the wife is left alone, when they are in heaven there, where are they? Will they resurrect? And this wife, who of the seven will this wife be when these are already have gone to the other side? Who? Now they're asking this question as usual to trick Jesus. But one thing we'd like to learn, learn here, dear friends, is this. That, first of all, all the widows or widowers, all the defenseless, are to be protected. We need to protect any person who has lost a wife or husband or who has lost even children, anyone who is fragile, defenseless, we need to protect all of us. In other words, we need to protect each other because in one way or another, we are all defenseless. I don't need to wait, of course, in order for others to protect me. No. As others protect me, I am also invited to protect others. Yes, all of us have the capacity, small or young or big, whatever it is, we have the capacity to protect each other. And who are the widows? The widows are those who are weak, fragile, delicate. We are invited to, to protect each other, not only the widows or the widowers, but each other as human beings, to protect each other and to encourage and be people who give life protection, care, love, tenderness, closeness, people who are like brothers and sisters and friends to each other, people who journey together, holding our hands together and knowing how to love and serve God by loving and serving our brothers and sisters, beginning from our homes. So every human, fragile, delicate person is to be protected, is to be embraced, is to be loved as God loves. God does not discriminate anyone. And before God, we are brothers and sisters, we are friends, we are humans, because each one of us is created in the image and likeness of God. 
So therefore, we learn to protect each other, especially the defenseless, the, those without voices, those without words, they have no power, those who are weak, who are sick, who are fragile, who are tender, who are vulnerable, who are marginalized, those who are left out. Ours is a life and a religion that includes... It's a religion that includes everyone. It's a religion that does not exclude anyone. All are invited as brothers and sisters in one family. So that's the first lesson to protect each other. And so Jesus now uses this opportunity and say, in heaven we shall all be one with God. At the end of time, there will be not like my husband, my wife, my children, my brothers, my friends, or whatever. We won't be one. If we have lived well our life here on earth, and that's what we are called to be and to do, then in heaven we will be already assured of heaven if we live our lives well, speaking well of others, doing well to others, and never getting tired of doing good and being good. If we encourage each other and move together as brothers and sisters, as the, with the power of family, sustaining each other as a family, looking at uh, encouraging each other taking the others they are. We are not here to change anyone. Everyone is unique. Even when we are different in opinions, in actions, we are supporting each other, listening to each other, dialoguing to each other, learning from each other's mistakes, encouraging each other in whatever is beautiful, loving each other, serving each other from our heart, using our energy, our strength, our mind, our gifts to share with our brothers and sisters. We are already in heaven on earth. When we love sincerely as God loves, we are already in heaven and earth. When we serve our brothers and, and welcome others, especially those who are struggling with life, we are already in heaven and earth. We experience heaven here already on, on earth. And that's, then at the same time, we are storing in the bank of our oneness with God. So Jesus says, when we shall finish our, our, our journey on earth here as pilgrims, doing good, then and we reach heaven, there will be nothing like a husband, a wife, I don't know, children, and whatever. No, all will be one, will we'll be united with God. We are created to love, to know God, to serve him, to work with him, to walk with him, and to be with him at the end of time. And so when, so this, this seven will not say this is the, the wife was for this seven. No, we will be all one. And it's beautiful if we help each other to be one with God and one with each other already on this earth. And we, we don't need to wait to, to go to heaven in order to be one. No, already on this earth we are invited to be one so that when we reach heaven, we are already one. And Jesus highlights saying our God is not God of the dead. Is the God of the living. From God, everything comes, and from God, everything moves, and from God, everything returns. Everything returns to God. He's the creator. Everything came from him, and everything returns to him. Even our loved ones who have gone ahead of us, may their souls rest in peace. We know that as we keep praying for them, may they also continue interceding for us, but we know that they are united with God. And the more we pray for them, the more we will be sure that they will be with God in peace, and they will continue interceding for us and praying for us, because we are united together as a family, a communion of saints, of the communion of those who are living and those who have gone ahead of us, the saints are all, this is our universal church. It's not only of the living, but it's also of those who have gone ahead of us because our God is God, not of the dead, but of the living. That's why even Jesus quotes uh, Moses. He quotes Abraham and for the Jews. They know Abraham is alive. And so he quotes Abraham and says, if you believe in Abraham, then you should believe in me and in the resurrection. I would like to end this reflection, dear friends, look, using the image of the seed, the seed like a bean or a maize seed. That's how our life is. Our life has been planted here on earth like a seed and it is to grow. And in order to grow, it needs the help of each other. In order to grow well, there are people who are to mature, to help to manure it in order to mature. We are here to help each other to put the water. Someone is putting water to each other. Others are putting manure. Others are cultivating, digging around to see that there are no weeds. But that seed, as it is put in the ground, now that's when the person dies, all of us, one way or another, we shall also be in the same journey. So as the person is into the ground, as the seed is put in the ground, it, it, it decomposes. It's no longer the same. It looks like it is finished. And yet that is when it is gaining momentum in order to bring out something more than the seed. And what is that we see? We see a big tree, a big plant, bigger than the seed. 
the seed which he thought is dead is alive. It's a big tree now. It's giving even shade. It's giving food, nourishment. It's giving um, medicine. And that seed, we thought it was dead. And it gives fruits. And those fruits enrich us more. And they keep taking care of us. This is what happens when our loved ones go ahead of us. These are people who have been with us and they never leave us. They are with us. They just take another form. What comes out from the dead seed and rotten seed is not the seed itself. It is the tree with fruits, with goodness. And that's what happens to our bodies, dear friends. That yes, it is much as there is a connection with our previous life. There is all, but there is also a new life that comes out like a big tree, like a big fruits. And that new life with God, with a lot of fruits. We shall be measured by how much we have loved. This is how we shall be judged by how much we have loved, how much seeds we have planted in the ground and know that bear more fruit. Let's continue planting seeds of goodness as many as they are and so that they can bear more fruit. And let's begin continue cutting off so that other things can die and decompose in order for us to have a new life, trusting in the Lord. And that's our mission, to see and that we are people who give new life to others. So there are situations in life when we feel down and we feel like there's no life. These things are creating, gaining momentum to give new life. Blessings from Jerusalem, dear friends.